Hi, and I'm Ashley Cotter Cairns from SellMyComicBooks.com, and this is another edition of This or That. I have written an article called The Amazing Spider Math, and the reason for writing that article was to demonstrate that most comic book collectors do their buying the wrong way around. Let's say you want to put together a run of Amazing Spider-Man from number 1 to 129. Well, most people would start the wrong way around and they'd start buying random issues from, let's say, let's say you start with number 100, uh, you add a number 75, an 86, the Black Widow cover, let's say 118, a Hulk cover, you start filling long boxes. You start investing your money into the non-key issues or the minor key issues and you dream one day of owning the number one, the number two, the number four, the number five and so on, number 14, number 129. I'm here to tell you you've had it all wrong all these years and it's time for you to think a bit differently about how you buy your comic book collections. So let's dig into the amazing spider math and see why my argument is so compelling. There's a reason that I published the article a couple of weeks before I wanted to make this video because I wanted to get some feedback from people on Facebook and on the website. And I was predicting that most people would be quite hostile to this idea. There are two reasons why people are hostile to this idea. The first is that comic book collectors are somehow leery of the word investors or investing or return on investment. You kind of really believe that this is a hobby and business shouldn't come into it. Um, honestly, guys, while collecting comic books is definitely fun and for sure it's something you can do for enjoyment, uh, surely you need to realize that there's going to be an exit strategy at some point. Okay, Unless you're buying modern comics just to read and then to recycle, you are going to have boxes of comic books sitting in your house or your basement or garage or somewhere and one day you or somebody else is going to want to sell them whether it's uh, your your kids if you die or you know just yourself if you want to sort of retire and downsize and get rid of some stuff so you need an exit strategy and the best and smartest way to have an exit strategy is to think about it before you spend a dime What's the easier way to get your money out of a collection? Is it to have one or two key issues to sell or 150 books, uh, random books in a long box? Of course it's easier to sell one key issue. Then, okay, so is that uh, somehow uh, unwise? Uh, is it somehow unclean? You know, like the, the way the collecting community talks about money is very weird to me, you know? It's sort of like there's a sense that Somehow it's dirty to, to mention money in relation to collecting comic books. Like, yeah, you know, that those two things need to be completely separate. Well, The Amazing Spider Math argues the exact opposite direction. And I'm going to show you some of the actual numbers to demonstrate why I think you guys need to change the way you buy comic book collections. But before I do that, I just want to give you a couple of, of the bits of feedback I had. Well, first, first and foremost, when we send out a newsletter, Typically, we get one or two people on the list who complain about the, the newsletter, which is an automatic process. When you get an email from us through Aweber, there's a little button that says, uh, click here to complain if you didn't authorize this email or you, you know it's not uh, content that you really think you should be getting from this mailing list. Okay, so the way our website works is about half the people who arrive are actually trying to sell their old collections. So sometimes they accidentally subscribe. And so we get a, one or two complaints uh, from uh, people who really ought not to be on the list in the first place. This particular email got six complaints, which doesn't sound like many, but it's three or four times as much as we normally get. We normally get one or maybe two complaints. So I think some of the people on the list who wanted to be on our list were disappointed that their long felt beliefs about comic book collection were being challenged. And the investment word is really like, 
uh, it's a dirty word in this in this uh, hobby. People don't like to hear it, and they have very strong views about it. And I don't really understand why. I'm here to challenge your views, right? This or that is all about challenging traditional comic book collectors' views, and to give you alternatives when you're thinking, okay, do I want to spend my money on what I was going to spend it on, or is Ash going to give me something else to to think about? That's my my job, right? So the number of complaints was really fascinating. Then I published a link to the article on Facebook. And when somebody had finished reading the article, he posted a comment that said, well, of course, people don't buy the number one first. It's expensive. I like that comment because I know I can challenge that and prove to you that that's bad thinking. And so let's just do that now. I'm going to start digging into the numbers and explain why it's bad thinking. So I decided that I would do, for demonstration purposes, um, I would uh, put it together an imaginary run of Amazing Spider-Man in CGC 4.0. So now the interesting thing about CGC 4.0 is it's about the sweet spot for the key issues. Most really like dedicated collectors don't want to see a, a real dog in their collection. They don't want to have a run of books where Everything else is a certain grade and then the keys are kind of really, really rough because that's all they could afford. So I just wanted to, to for the sake of, of demonstrating the, the math here, I wanted to create a, an imaginary run of Amazing Spider-Man from 1 to 129, all in CGC4. When you get to issue, let's say, 52 or so, there aren't that many key issues to come and the price of books becomes pretty stable. It's approximately fifty to seventy-five dollars for a, a CGC 4.0 for most issues between number fifty-two and one hundred, approximately. And after I think it's after number eighty, the the average price of acquiring a CGC 4.0 of a non-key issue drops to twenty-five, thirty-five dollars. So what I did was make some presumptions. We can't be perfect, right? And you can't do things like factoring in um, the cost of shipping because that's just really impossible to, to calculate. One seller might have different shipping prices and another might have another shipping price. And so, yes, of course, there's going to be cost of shipping involved. Well, let's imagine you are buying that, that fabled number one issue. You only have to pay one lot of shipping on that probably FedEx, probably overnight, because you want that key issue in your hands as soon as possible. But the cost of shipping one book is obviously a lot less than the cost of shipping 100 books. And if you're buying books from multiple sellers, you won't be able to have 100 books shipped in one box. So, of course, there will be some hidden costs here that we can't dig into. Bearing in mind there are some variables we can't allow for in this example, I just wanted to give you big picture numbers, right? I didn't want it to make it too complicated. So, uh, an Amazing Spider-Man number one in CGC 4.0 currently will set you back about $5,500, and by the time you read this, for all I know, it'll be 6,000. This book is on fire right now. It's really appreciating fast, and uh, the approximately 500 US dollars a year more to get a CGC 4 than, than the previous year, and that's been pretty consistent for the last few years. So you're seeing a pretty solid rate of return of $500 a year on that book. Uh, so, okay, let's say, let's say you are one of those collectors who's really put off by the word investment. Let's just say, ah, you're not gonna go there, la 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 la, I don't wanna hear the word investment, I don't, I'm a comic book collector, I'm a purist, I don't know why you're buying books in CGC holders if you're a purist, but let's say you are. Let's look at it the other way around then. Let's switch the word investment round. What is the other side of that coin? The other side of that coin is cost. So if you want to own a CGC 4.0 of Amazing Spider-Man number one, it's going to cost you, at the moment, $5,500. We know from recent history, you can plot it all in GP analysis for comics or eBay sales. From recent history, that book will cost you another $500 next year and another $500 the following year, presuming it doesn't go heating up even further. I have a theory that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1 is getting hot because people can't afford AF-15 anymore. Uh, and so they're switching their, their focus to the first appearance of Spidey in his own comic book, which makes sense. So 
You don't want to use the word investment, that's fine with me. We'll, we'll talk about cost. Every year you delay buying that issue one, it's going to cost you an extra $500. So what's your plan? You want to put this run together. You start buying those issues like I mentioned earlier, like the odd issues here and there. Maybe you save up a couple of months worth of money and you plop it down on an ASM 50 in uh, 4 Congratulations, by the way. Great book. But, but, is there a better way? You could say to me, Ash, I can't afford to spend $5,500 on an ASM one. Okay, fine. You could say to me, Ash, I can afford $300 a month for my, my hobby. I say, fine. So, why don't you borrow the money from the bank at 8% interest, make those $300 payments each month instead of putting $300 into random issues, and while you're paying the interest on that loan, the book is appreciating and it's, it's earning you more than it would cost you to borrow the money. I know this is a bit of a, a blue sky thinking, but I want you to, to give this a moment. So I did a quick loan calculation on a $6,000 loan. So I presume that by the time you've actually convinced yourself this is a good idea, it's going to have gone up again. So you put $6,000 into an Amazing Spider-Man 1. You make loan payments. Uh, and we'll, we'll put a little bit of money aside for insurance because I want you to insure this book just in case something happens to it. So you're making those loan payments. It's about $270 a month. And every month that you own that book, it's increasing in value, right? So we know every, every year it's increasing about 500 bucks. So by the time you've paid off, let's say it's a two-year loan, by the time you've paid off your two-year loan, you would have paid $502 in interest. Guess what? Your book has appreciated a thousand bucks. So you're almost 500 bucks ahead and you own that holy grail ASM1 that you've always wanted but you said you can't afford. Plus, you haven't spent a bunch of money on random non-key issues and had them shipped to you and have to store them and have to pay the shipping and all those other things. Now, another piece of math which is interesting, when I, I looked at a run, I decided that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give some some of these books uh, an average value, which we talked about a few minutes ago. And what does it actually cost you to put together this run? Well, it costs you about sixteen thousand bucks to put together a run of ASM one to one twenty nine in CGC four O, presuming that the price is stay, stable. Then I decided, okay, well, how does that break down? So the run of eleven to one twenty nine costs six thousand two hundred twenty bucks. Whether you buy them all at one shot, which is pretty unlikely, let's face it, or if you put them together over the period of, few, of a few months, that's the math. 6,220 bucks to buy issues 11 through 129. It costs you about 4,000 bucks to put together the run from two to 10. And it costs you, as we talked about earlier, $5,500 to buy the number one. But we know with some certainty that the number one's gonna increase in value. So. Let's say you say, forget it, I'm not going to buy the number one. I'm just going to go and buy the others. Screw Ash, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he's got it all backwards. I like, I like doing it my way. Well, let's say it takes you three years, uh, you're 300 bucks a month. Uh, what is the math on that? 300 bucks a month is it's 16,000 minus 5,500. So it's $16,000 to buy the run minus 5,500 for that book you can't afford. Okay, so it's 10,500 bucks divided by your $300 monthly uh, budget, let's call it. So it's gonna take you 35 months, which is approximately three years, okay? It's gonna take you three years to put that run together. We're not too clear on a couple of, of points, like how, if you can't afford to spend more than 300 bucks a month, are you gonna get Another one of those key issues like ASM 14, which you know in a 4.0 is a, I think it's about $900 at the moment. It's really expensive right now. Uh, or ASM 2. Never mind. Just for the sake of argument, say you've managed to put a couple of your months payments together, and you've bought the other key issues. So, in the three years that it took you to put together the other $10,500 at 300 bucks a month, your Dream Holy Grail ASM1 has now increased by $1,500. Now, 
instead of 5,500, it is $7,000. So if you're still putting together 300 bucks a month to buy that key issue, it's gonna take you another two years to save up the 7,000 bucks. But guess what? In that two year period that it's taking you to save up the 7,000 bucks, it's gonna be 8,000 because we know it goes up 500 bucks a year. Surely it's time for you to think differently about this. Surely you can see the logic here. By just borrowing the money to buy this key issue now, paying that 300 bucks a month in payments instead of putting them in, in a sock drawer or whatever it is you keep your money for your comic books, you will be making a solid, I hate to say this word again, investment. You're investing in a blue chip key issue which is really, really increasing in value at a very predictable rate. That is a fantastic thing to do. And even if you're just a collect, just a collector, and you're really a big fan of Spider-Man, can't you see how much fun it would be to own that book? By saying to yourself, I can't afford this right now, it's costing you more when you finally think you can afford it. And if you're kind of leery about borrowing money because it's somehow not, uh, not a good thing to do, your mum told you never, never get into debt, come on. What, do you, what would you spend that money on? Let's think about it. It's $270 a month. Well, plenty of people have cars they don't really need and they're spending higher uh, monthly payments on their cars and of course the insurance is higher because you, you buy a fancier car than you really need. Plenty of people will drop serious money on a computer, a TV. All those things I just described are depreciating assets. That means the longer you own them, the less they are worth. I'll let that sink in for a second. Let's say you say to yourself, no, I'm going to borrow the money and buy myself a car for $6,000. What's going to happen to that car in two years' time? It's going to be worth, if you're lucky, $3,000. And you've still been making the payments, and you've still been paying interest. Now, I'm not saying you should do without a car and cycle everywhere. This is not the point. The point is you are completely happy with the idea of borrowing money to buy depreciating assets. Why not turn your thinking around, borrow the money to buy something which is shown and proven to be an appreciating asset? And you put together the dream run of Spider-Man and you get to own the number one for two or three more years than you would if you had to afford it the other way around. So I hope that this uh, edition of This or That has made you think differently about how you buy comic book runs. Uh, buying runs backwards is, is a disaster financially. Although it's fun, you get a box full of books to look at. Really, when you do the math, you're doing it wrong. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe. Uh, follow us on Facebook at Sell My Comic Books. Go and check us out on eBay, see all the books we have to sell, uh, for sale at Sell My Comic Books and visit our website sellmycomicbooks.com. I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for listening to this or that.